The movie opens up with a middle-aged man named Escalante driving his old car to Garfield High School, where he is set to start his first day as a teacher. Along the way, he looks through the window and witnesses the vibrant sights of the Latino community, with people selling fruit on the road and bustling about their daily chores. Sometime later, upon arriving at the school, Escalante walks up to the reception and receives some bad news. Despite being hired as a computer teacher, the receptionist informs him that he has been appointed as a mathematics teacher instead. When he asks the authorities about this apparent mistake, he is informed that there are no computers in the school, and so he should quietly do his assigned duty. Having no other options, he reluctantly agrees. Later, as Escalante begins to navigate his new role, he meets Miss Raquel Ortega, the head of the math department, who accompanies him to his class. Unfortunately, when Escalante enters the class, the students appear to be rebellious and disruptive, and they argue that math is not a valuable subject for them to learn. I don't need a long division to know that I'm high right now. Escalante tries his best to get them under control, but to no avail. To make matters worse, a false bell rings, causing the students to scatter outside the classroom. Escalante later discovers that some students had broken the bell to make it ring randomly. At the end of the day, after the classes end, Escalante returns to his car, only to discover that the window has been shattered and the radio is missing. Feeling frustrated about his first day at work, he returns home angrily. Later, he spots his neighbor Joe while taking out the trash, and they engage in a brief conversation. From it, we get to know that Escalante used to work at a computer company with a higher salary before he decided to join the school as a teacher. His motivation for the career change was to teach and help Latino students get better marks. On the following day, Escalante makes a dramatic entrance to the classroom, dressed in an unusual butcher outfit and carrying a bag of apples. He has a creative idea to teach the students about fractions and proportions by cutting the apples into different portions and distributing them equally. Surprisingly, the plan works, and the students are immediately engaged and respond positively to the activity, laughing and learning at the same time. However, a student with a rebellious attitude disrupts the class by giving Escalante the middle finger. Punch this into your calculator, Escalante. Despite the disrespectful behavior, he remains composed and calmly addresses the situation. He even teaches the unruly student the multiples of nine by using his fingers. In the next scene, Escalante's creativity and dedication to his students are on full display as he takes an innovative approach to connect with the unruly students. He recognizes that a personalized approach is necessary to capture their attention and convey the value of math education. Escalante engages with each student individually, weaving in stories of Latino Latino history and demonstrating how math can open up a world of possibilities. He emphasizes the importance of education and how it can help individuals rise above their circumstances. With honesty and sincerity, Escalante explains that being illiterate can limit one's career options to pumping gas or selling fried chicken, while math skills can lead to greater opportunities and success. To Escalante's good luck, the students respond positively, showing greater focus and engagement in the classroom. After the class, Escalante heads to the staff room to attend a meeting with other teachers, where Principal Molina reveals that the school's accreditation is in danger due to the poor performance of the students. The head of the math department, Ortega, admits that despite their efforts, the teachers have been unable to raise the students' scores. This is when Escalante boldly steps forward and declares that he can improve the scores using his unique teaching methods. To demonstrate his point, the next day, he quickly subjects the students to a quiz contest. Despite their reluctance to take part in it, Escalante encourages them to see math as a tool for fighting against poverty and racism. As Escalante walks down the hallway after class, a student named Angel approaches him seeking help. He confesses that he is unable to study due to peer pressure and requests some books to study at home. Acknowledging Angel's desire to learn, Escalante borrows some books from the library for him, hoping to help him succeed in his studies. However, not all students are equally motivated, and one such student is Lupe, who refuses to submit her homework and even declines to take the quiz. As a punishment, Escalante brings her to the front of the class and everyone laughs at her, causing her to feel humiliated. This makes Escalante feel bad, but he also understands that peer pressure and embarrassment are powerful tools to bring unruly and disobedient students back on track. In the next scene, we are shown the harsh reality of Latino students' lives outside of the classroom. Angel struggles to balance his studies with taking care of his sick grandmother, while Lupe has to look after her younger siblings as her parents are always busy with work. The pressure of supporting their families weighs heavily on these students, and the consequences are severe. Anna, a talented student, has to drop 
out of school to help run her family's struggling restaurant, sacrificing her own education for the sake of her loved ones. One day, Escalante and his wife, Fabiola, pay a visit to Anna's family restaurant and enjoy a meal together. As they chat, Anna introduces Escalante to her father, and the conversation shifts to education. Escalante requests Anna's father let her continue her studies, but he dismisses the idea, citing the common belief that girls are more likely to become pregnant before getting a degree. Frustrated by the narrow-mindedness of the situation, Escalante becomes angry and emphasizes that denying Anna an education would be a tragic waste of her potential. The following day in class, Escalante challenges his students with a difficult algebraic problem. This puts everyone in a tough spot, and just as they're about to give up, Anna arrives at the classroom door and confidently solves the problem. To her delight, all the students are impressed by her intelligence, and they cheer for her in excitement. This is not how I remember high school. Later, Escalante arranges a field trip to the computer company, where he previously worked. He wants to show them how math can be applied in the real world, and how it can be a tool for success. During the visit, Escalante learns that his friend's daughter is already studying calculus in high school, which inspires him to aim even higher for his students. So, he sets a goal to teach calculus to his class from the following year forward. It's rare for schools in the area to do so, but Escalante has full confidence that his students will get accustomed to it. When he proposes his idea to Molina, he also adds that he wants his students to pass the advanced placement test to ensure that they have a chance to get into college after high school. However, department head Ortega interrupts the conversation and suggests that some teachers may not be able to pass the test themselves. She even goes as far as threatening to leave her position in the department if Escalante's words are heard over hers. Despite the challenges, the principal ultimately agrees with Escalante's ideas, recognizing the potential for the students to achieve greatness and protect the school's reputation. The following scene opens with the new school year, and Escalante is seen handing out contracts to his students, outlining the requirements for attending extra classes before and after regular school hours. He urges them to get their parents' signatures to confirm their commitment. The following day, all the students, except for one, return with their signed contract. This student is hesitant to commit to his studies, and instead wants to work in a garage to support his family. However, Escalante deals with him personally, and manages to persuade him to take the educational path by providing a motivational example. Next, we see that the students begin to learn calculus at an impressive pace. Later at night, during a family dinner, Fabiola raises concerns over her husband's workload. Here, we learn that he has been working extra hours, teaching in schools and coaching English to immigrant seniors. Unfortunately, the excessive pressure takes a toll on Escalante, and he suffers a heart attack in one of his English classes. He is rushed to the hospital, where the doctors advise him to take a month's rest. With the placement test just two weeks away, his absence becomes a major hurdle for his students. They feel disheartened and worried as their hard work and dedication might go in vain due to the lack of guidance from their teacher. To make matters worse, the principal suggests a music teacher as a substitute for Escalante, leaving the students in a very perilous state. In the following scene, despite being advised to take a month's rest, Escalante returns to the school after only a few days. He is adamant on helping his students prepare for the upcoming Educational Testing Service, or ETS, even at the expense of his health. As expected, under his guidance, the students excel and all of them pass the exam, bringing great pride and celebration to Garfield High School. Principal Molina announces their achievement in the assembly, and the students present Escalante with a gift as a token of appreciation for his hard work. However, their success and celebration are short-lived, as the ETS accuses the students of cheating due to their identical mistakes in the answers. Two ETS officers, Dr. Pearson and Dr. Ramirez, come to the Garfield School to inspect the answer sheets and the exam location, but find no evidence of cheating. Frustrated, they turn their attention to the students and gather them in a room, pressuring them to confess to cheating. In the meantime, Angel attempts to lighten the mood, but fails to convince the officers to drop their suspicion of cheating. As they leave the room, the students feel uneasy, knowing that their academic integrity has been called into question. Escalante tries to console them, but he is also disappointed and doesn't know how to deal with the situation. Later, Escalante seeks out Ortega's opinion on the matter, hoping for some insight into what may have led to the accusations. However, her suggestion that the students may have cheated to please him leaves him feeling even more conflicted. Upset, he heads to the the parking lot, only to find that his car has been stolen. So, he is forced to walk all the way home, lost in his thoughts. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Escalante's car was stolen by none other than his students. They actually planned to repair and modify it as a gesture of gratitude towards him. The man just had a heart attack and you made him walk home, you idiots. Cool present, exhibit. After pouring their hearts and souls into it, the students finally return the car to Escalante's house. Although shocked at first, he thanks them warmly and promises to not give up on them no matter what 
what. The next day, Escalante goes straight to the ETS office and confronts Dr. Pearson and Dr. Ramirez. The two officials have accused his students of cheating on their advanced placement exams, citing similarities in their answers. Escalante demands proof, arguing that the similarities could be attributed to their shared teacher and classroom, rather than cheating. However, Pearson raises the possibility of the students' Latino origins being a factor in their suspected cheating. This sparks an intense discussion about racism and bias, with Escalante strongly objecting to such insinuations. Unfortunately, the meeting doesn't come to a conclusion, so Escalante leaves the ETS office feeling frustrated and angry, but he is still not going to give up. So, with the help of his students, he decides to challenge the system. They prepare themselves to retake the exams, determined to prove their abilities and defy the accusations against them. As the day of the re-exam approaches, Escalante takes it upon himself to ensure his students are well prepared for all the questions. He spends the entire evening before the exam helping his students with calculus problems, while simultaneously cooking dinner at his house. On the morning of the exam, the students gather in the hall, while Escalante anxiously waits in his office. Soon, the test begins, and everyone starts answering the questions with confidence. The questions are harder than usual, but the students are well prepared thanks to their heroic teacher's efforts. As Escalante anxiously waits for the test results, he receives news that the school has finally received computers. Filled with anticipation, he rushes to the principal's office as soon as he hears him discussing the results over the phone. To Escalante's delight, he finds out that all of his students have passed the test with exemplary scores, a testament to their hard work and Escalante's dedication to teaching. The movie ends with Escalante walking out of the principal's room, and a title card stating that from 1982 to 1987, the number of students passing the AP Calculus test at Garfield High School increased significantly, going from just 18 to an impressive 87. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.